Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Today, I'm so encouraged in the Lord. So I thought I would come on here and talk to y'all about it. This morning, um, I'm by myself, which is, you get to spend more time with the Lord when you're by yourself. Um, Amy is in Atlanta today and Chris is at the beach fishing today. And so, um, I'm actually going to cook all day long in video, not live, but do some really good videoing. Um, because I know I won't be interrupted, which is very, which is how it used to be when I first started Color Valley Cooks. Because the kids were always at school and Chris was at work. And so, I knew I had a time frame that I could work in. So, I'm excited about that. But on my way to the post office this morning... I heard my favorite song, You've Got a Friend, and I've told y'all this before, and if you're new to watching, um, every time I hear that song, I think of Jesus Christ, and I get so excited. So I had my Bluetooth on, and I was listening to Pandora, and that song came on, and so I replayed it like four or five times and meditated on what a friend we have in Jesus. So, um, I actually printed out the lyrics to it. I'm going to go grab them off the printer and I'll be right back. I didn't grab them like I thought I did. Okay. It printed them really small text, but I think I can make it out. But I looked up some scripture about friends, and I will say that... Um, you know, we have the song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, that we listen to at church. Um, and there's not a lot in here that talks about Jesus actually using the word friend. Um, but there was a couple of verses, only a couple out of about 50, that used the word friend that I thought that we could reference this morning. And one is in Second Chronicles, and it's chapter 20, verse 7. And it says, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? Um, so he talks about how Abraham uh, was a friend forever. And so... I just, I'm going to read the lyrics to the song, and I want y'all to think about Jesus as I read it. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my personal life when I was a young girl. So, um, we're, but I'm going to talk about this first. And it says, you've got a friend, and it says, when you're down and troubled, and you need a helping hand, and nothing, nothing is going right, close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there. To brighten up even your darkest night. Um, I'm going to stop right there and talk about, every time I read a, a section, I'll talk about something in my life that that reminds me of. And one is when I was a little girl, um, we lived in the country, of course. And one of my favorite things to do back then, you know, we only got um, TV on the weekend as far as cartoons. So, me and Eddie actually played outside a lot together. Melissa, witness, she would go outside and play with us, but she wasn't that. She was more to herself kind of person. So, me and Eddie were always in the yard. But when I would get down when I was a little girl, I had a favorite spot to go to. And thank goodness, I was taken to church at an early age. My mom always took us to church. Daddy only went on special occasions. And um, to this day, I really don't think that my daddy is saved, but I think the Holy Spirit is working on him. So y'all keep praying, pray for my daddy. Um, and y'all know my br brother is actually a pastor now. So um, anyway, I called him and I told him to go and talk with daddy because the last couple of times I've talked with my dad, he actually tried to use scripture in reference to something he was trying to tell me about which he's never done before. So I really think that the Holy Spirit is working on him. Um, he was a deacon's son, so he's taken to church plenty, but I don't think he ever surrendered to the Lord. And if, if you wonder why I feel that way, it's because of his life never reflected that. He would help people. He was good about helping people and giving to people, 
but that was the only thing I ever really saw in him that would give me any indication that he was a child of God. And so and there was a lot of things that did not. So y'all keep him in your prayers. And his name is William. And um, so y'all keep him in your prayers. But this reminds me of when I was little. And if I was down and troubled, um, I would go out in the pasture. And there was a perfect spot that I went to, the same spot. Or I would go sometimes when I was really young. I would actually go out where on the front pasture where my horse was. His name was Tim. He was a white horse with blue eyes. And I would talk to him. Um, and, but now as I got older and I got saved, I got saved at a pretty young age. Um, and I know I got saved. Even if I didn't always live for God, I know that my soul was saved because I believed in Jesus Christ. And uh, not just believed that he was you know, a lot of people believe, but they don't have trust in him. But I trusted in Jesus Christ at a young age. And um, I went out to the back pasture, and I would look up, and I would always pray. And that's where I would go. Now, I prayed constantly when I was little, all the time. Um, and so it was very important. I think it's very important for kids to have that today. I think a lot of kids today, and even my own, have so many problems because they don't have... A friend to go to they don't have that friend in Jesus to speak to so many of us today need counselors now I'm not one that don't believe in counseling or medication for those who need it but so many of us today have to have that uh, because we do not use Jesus as our um, friend and talk to him about our troubles and our problems and and things now um, so I was just thinking about that today. Now, was my life perfect? Absolutely not. And there's a lot of things I haven't talked about. And I actually thinking about writing a book and you're probably thinking, really? And I'm, I'm like, yes, but it says, um, the, the next lyric says, you just call out my name and you know, wherever I am, I'll come running. Oh yeah, baby, to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you have to do is call, and I'll be there. Yeah, 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 you've got a friend. And Jesus really is there, winter, spring, summer, or fall, anytime. He's always there. And it's very encouraging um, to know that for us. And it also says, if the sky above you should turn dark and full of clouds, and that old north wind should begin to blow, Keep your head together and call my name out loud. Soon you'll hear me knocking at your door. Now, if you think about Jesus, um, when we do go through these dark times, if we do keep our heads together and we look to him, things are much brighter. Um, and he even says, oh my goodness, I didn't even print all of it. But I'm, I know towards the end, he says, um, they'll take your soul if you let them. Oh, now, but don't you let them. So it just it's just perfect because what happens when we don't look to Jesus and when we don't turn to Jesus is we turn to the world, and that is not where we should turn, and that will pull our souls away and... It, it, it makes a big difference in our attitude on life. And if we make it, if we keep striving to look forward and not look backwards. Um, there's two more scripture I'm going to read. And then I'm going to tell you why I feel this way personally. Uh, because of something that's happened in my life. I've many things I could talk about. But I'll tell you about the first thing that happened. But James 2 verse 23 says... Um, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. Now, both times that they reference friend in a positive light, it's about Abraham. Okay? And Abraham was a friend of God. Okay? It's not so much talking about how Jesus is a friend to us, but how we should be a friend, 
I guess you would say to him. Now, he is a friend to us, and we know that. It's the Holy Spirit that actually is what he sent here to give us comfort. So it's his spirit that, that makes us feel uh, the way we need to feel to get through our rough times and our dark times. And because God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit are all one, they work together. Uh, they complement, of course, each other very well. And we should not just uh, exclude, you know, the Holy Spirit or Jesus and just talk to God. We need to make sure that we go through Jesus Christ because he's our mediator. And we need to make sure that we are in tune with the Spirit so that um, we have a brighter day each day in our life. Um, so I have tagged You've Got a Friend to the top post, and I'm going to leave it there. Own Real Southern Woman, and if you ever feel like you're down and lonely or whatever, play it and listen to it, and it will um, help you because it's real and it's true, and what's so good about the Bible is that it is real. Now, when I was a young girl, I, like I said, I got saved at a very young age, and I, my mother was a pastor's daughter in my Dad was a deacon's son, but Daddy never went to church with us, and he was, I mean, he's still alive, but he was not, he was not a very sweet man uh, to, to my mother. He was pretty good to us. He was a good provider, but he was um, also pretty mean, okay? Mama, when I was a young girl, was a very positive, wonderful young mother, and she did very well uh, with her children. And she got us all dressed and took us to church. And she put up a, with a lot out of my daddy. Um, as far as the language, he, he didn't really cuss, but he was just mean. And he, and he believed that a woman was there to serve a man. I mean, that's how he really believed. Now, in the Bible and in the scriptures, we are to compliment our men. And our men is the head, which I do believe when it comes right down to it. But the Bible and Jesus puts women um, very much equal as far as spiritually. We can, um, we're there to complement each other and work as a team. Uh, we're not to be talked down to or treated bad or, or treated like a slave to a man at all. And, uh, but my dad was, mostly unlearned because he didn't study the scripture and all he knew was what he had been taught and so he uh, didn't really use the scripture in context if that makes sense and so he wasn't always nice to my mother and she ran after him like crazy I mean seriously y'all my mother when I, the whole time I was growing up um, when daddy's feet hit the floor Mama had his clothes laid out on the bed, okay? His socks. She had his handkerchief for the day. He, he took a handkerchief. She had his work clothes. Um, and all that stuff was there for him. When he came home from work, she took off his boots. And she made a spit cup for him to spit in. No kidding. And if the TV antenna needed to be turned back in, Back in the day, we lived in the country, we had an antenna. She was the one that went outside and turned it and found the station that Daddy wanted. Mama did everything for my dad. But the one thing that Mama didn't do was, and this is part of it, was that Daddy loved um, his cattle and his um, land and he loved to go look at land, and that was just something that he loved. And he would ask Mama a lot, a lot, Iva, go out um, and walk the pasture with me today. Will you go out and feed the cows with me today? Will you this or will you that? She would never go. So she wouldn't be a friend to her husband. Now, does it make Mama wrong in certain ways? Yes. 
and Daddy was wrong too. Now, none of us are perfect, and none of us have a perfect life, um, and none of us will ever be perfect, because I'm guilty too. Chris will ask me sometimes to go places, and I say no, but I don't say no every time. Most of the time, I try to go. Um, I mean, if it were up to him, I'd be at the beach with him this week, but I do need a break every once in a while, and um, and so I do go with him, and I fish with him, y'all. I fish with him on our honeymoon, but what I'm trying to get you to see is that um, there's a whole lot, of course, I, I'm not going to tell you, but our life was not a beautiful life at home. Now, we were provided for, and Daddy worked hard, and he was smart, and he made plenty of money, um, but he didn't spoil us growing up, and he didn't buy us fancy clothes, and they wouldn't buy us name brand shoes to wear to school, and things like that, um, because Daddy saved all of his money, and he invested it. So now, today, he's, he's a wealthy man, um, but we never went on a vacation, and we... Uh, never went out to eat in a restaurant when I was growing up. We never even went to the movies. The first movie I got to see, I actually went with my Aunt Carolyn and Uncle David Sullins. And they took us to a drive-in theater in a van. And we got to see a movie um, for the first time. So Daddy never spent any of his money on us for fun things, for entertainment, things like that. So when we were growing up, um, the thing that, that impacted me the most was, um, you know, daddy wasn't nice to my mother and my mother did turn to alcohol and, uh, prescription drugs, I believe as an outlet. And she was a wonderful woman and, and I love her, but that was her way. Now, the reason I'm talking to y'all today about this is not because I'm disrespecting my parents. It's because I want you to see how we can be encouraged no matter what situation we are in, okay? And I want you to see why God always tells us in the Bible not to look backwards, but to look forward. If you'll remember, um, I'm trying to think. I think it was, I want to I can't remember whose wife it was, but I think it may have been Moses's. But somebody knows. Y'all can tell me. And I haven't looked it up, but I was just thinking of it. You know, God says, he told them when they left. Um, actually, I believe it was, the, it was the family where they went and got their kinfolk out of Sodom and Gomorrah before he burned it up with fire. And he told them not to look back. And the wife looked back and he turned her into a pillar like a statue of salt, I believe is what it was, and or stone. I can't, y'all know how my mind works, but what I'm trying to say is you don't need to look backwards, ever. Um, because if you look backwards and you live in your past, you don't overcome it, okay? Now, at a, at a you know, it's Lot's wife, Marilyn, and so... Um, the reason I'm saying this is at an early age, I learned how not to live in my present situation in my mind, but to live somewhere else or not look backwards. And I think that's why I am where I am today because of God and his blessings and the way he taught me and the encouragement that I had in him. Um, Kamisha said it was Aaron's wife into salt. Um, so, anyway, no matter whose wife, of, of course, it was, we know that he was trying to show them that we shouldn't look backwards and live in our past, okay? Um, when I was a young teenager, I was 15 years old, I, um, my family life at home was not good, and when you're 15, you're crazy, no matter who you are, no matter whose house you live in. And my kids were the same way, and they had a beautiful home with parents that loved each other, but they still had problems. That age, you're just absolutely lost in your mind and hormones, and it's really hard. So, um, but when I was 15, I met my neighbor. He was, he was very good looking, um, 
and I fell in love. Now, I was actually 14 when I met him and started dating him. Now, we didn't go out. Of course, I was too young. He had to come to my house, and I would go to his house, and so we were always around parents, but he and his family talked me in to getting married. Now, um, this is pretty doggone detailed, but it's the truth, and I want you to, to, to hear it. Because when you're 15 years old, for one, you don't know anything. You think you know everything, and you're pretty doggone goofy, you know. And um, I had parents at home. Daddy was always gone, and Mama was not doing well uh, at the time. And so... I found an outlet in this guy, you know, and I connected with him, and I had always been taught that you were supposed to get married, okay? So, I felt like, you know, that I was doing right, but he asked me would I marry him, and I said no. Now, we went to his home, and his parents sat me down on the couch. Now, I'm 15, okay? And they're farmers. They're dairy farmers. And they, his daddy called me names, and um, let me decline this call. Anyway, his daddy was mean, really mean. And he um, was an alcoholic, but they called me names because I didn't want to get married, and... Um, they made a plan, a real plan. Now, these were grown adults, but they had a plan that his dad felt like if we did, my daddy would let me get married. Now, you're probably thinking, why would they want you to get married when you're 15? Because they had a dairy farm, and we were going to work the dairy farm. Um, so, we... They said, and this is for real. Now, these grown adults said, Tammy, if you will run away with this guy, you know, if you'll run away with Dwayne, his name was Dwayne, um, and you spend the night, I feel like your daddy will sign for you to get married because I was too young to legally get married. And... They had a plan where we were going to stay, um, how long we were going to be gone, etc. And they talked me into it. Now, look, granted, I went through a couple of weeks of nothing but tears and saying no. And then I had two adults and my boyfriend, whom I, when you're 15, you think you're, you're in love. And I really was... I mean, to me, with grown people, talk to a 15-year-old, and they make a plan. Anyway, they made a plan, and I went for it. So, we went. We stayed in a hotel. Well, it's a motel. Like, I believe it's in, like, a, a couple of counties away so that my parents couldn't find me because they got out and looked for me. Um, and it's horrible what I did. Um, and then we actually stayed in one of the barns overnight y'all. They had it all set up. And then when I went back home, my daddy, that man knew that my daddy would be like, oh my God, she might be pregnant. Let's just sign. And I told my daddy, I was like, I'm, I was on my, actually on my cycle at the time. And I said, daddy, there's no way I could be pregnant, but he didn't believe me. So we went to Alabama and my mother and daddy signed for me to get married. And we lived in a house across the street. Daddy rented the house across the street from us. Um, and so I was married at the age of 15. Living in a house across the street from my parents in the country. And um, we would get up in the morning and go milk cows at 5 o'clock. And then we would milk cows at 5 in the evening. And we lived across the street from mom and dad for six months. And at that, by then, after that time, Daddy actually paid our rent. Well, the other guy, the 
my husband's dad didn't like that very much. He wanted us on the farm. So he moved us out into a trailer that was on the farm property uh, so that we could work the dairy, you know. And so we moved into this trailer. Now, y'all, I was 15. And um, I look at kids today, and it is just unbelievable to me. But I was 15. I would get out and fix fences. I could pick up feed, bags of feed. Um, we worked hard, y'all. And I still went to high school. And I, I got on the bus and went. Um, so I, I never wanted to quit school because I'd always been so smart. I was very smart, y'all. Intelligent kid. And so I didn't want to give up that. And we would get up every day and go milk cows at 5 in the morning I would come in for real using the milk that came from the cows. I would make my husband at the time, kids we were, biscuits and breakfast. Then I would get dressed. I would have to take a shower because many mornings, because of the time of year that we moved there, um, it was really cold and we had silos up on the hill and we would have to go get feed out of the silos and um Take, you know, so that the cows would have sweet feed. So it would stink really bad. So you always had to shower. I would get in the shower and I would um, get cleaned up and go to high school. After that, all doing all that that morning. And then I would come home off the bus and do it all over again because the cows had to be milked at five in the morning and five in the afternoon. And um, I was so picky about the trailer that we moved into. It was a it was a piece of crap, pretty much. It was a single wide and it was really small. It was one bedroom. It was filthy, y'all, when I got, got there. Filthy. And I look at how I clean the carpet in that trailer today and I think kids wouldn't do that for anything. But look, I always had drive. Never did I, you know, not have drive. And y'all should see that already, but when I got to that trailer, the carpet was a real short pile, and it was so filthy that it was matted, and I didn't have anything to clean the carpet with. So what I did was I got five-gallon buckets, the big buckets, and I would put soap and water in them. I would pour them on the carpet because it was just in the living room. And I would take a broom handle, like the, the stick of a broom, and I would push the water until I got it out the door of the trailer. And I did that over and over and over until I got that carpet cleaned. Now, I was just not going to live in filth. And so, I'm saying this because no matter where you are in life and no matter what you're doing, it's up to you to get up and make it better. Now, I could have lived in that trailer filthy and wallowed in my sorrow, but I didn't. I got up off my butt, and I made sure it was clean, and I made it a home, even if I was 15 years old. And then, um, once my, while we lived in that trailer, his dad got drunk one night and came over there pitching a fit. It was horrible. All about some pillows. Um, and they, they were mad because I had been going to their house to wash clothes because I didn't have a washer and dryer. And so I, they, I couldn't go back over there and wash my clothes because they said I couldn't. And so y'all, I washed our clothes in the bathtub and I rinsed them and I hung them out to dry for six months. Well, no, I'd say about four months. So we were married about a year. And those kinds of things is not what pushed me away because I wasn't lazy. It was the meanness, you know, like they were mean. Like I thought my house was bad until I got into that family. And then I was like, holy smokes. Because when you add alcohol to a man, then you really got problems, okay? So, oh my gosh, it was just horrifying. I mean, some of the things we went through and some of the things they did. And at that point, 
uh, it was mostly his dad that was being mean to me, but then it became him being mean to me to prove to his dad that he was a man. And that didn't go over well with me because I loved myself more than that. And even if I knew that I had done the right thing by getting married to this man, as far as God was concerned, I knew that if I had children with this man, I was on birth control, but I knew if I had children with this man that they would live that way. And I did not want that. They didn't go to church. And one of the things that they talked us into running off together for was I remember the day that they sat me down in that living room. I mean, I was just a kid. And they said, and I was saved, but I was not learned. And I hadn't read much of the Bible. I had only learned by what I had been told or what the Sunday school teacher said or what the preacher said. And they said to me, Adam and Eve didn't have a preacher. And they didn't get married. But it was okay in the sight of the Lord because they were together. <laughs> I mean... It's just crazy what I went through, really, when you think about it. But I never gave up. And so what happened to me was one morning we had been to milk the cows, and we came in that morning. Uh, there was two things that did it. So this is what I want to say to women who have men that are mean to them. I don't know how y'all do it. Because I was 15. Dumb as a box of rocks as far as relationships are concerned. But I knew enough in my heart and mind that a man could have loved me and I wasn't going to live that way. We went to Walmart um, and we picked up my birth control pills. <laughs> and we were coming out of Walmart and he said something to me and I, and I didn't know what he said and I said, What? And he yelled at me out loud in front of everybody. And he screamed, did you get your GD pill box? And it was so embarrassing. I was so embarrassed. And because he humiliated me in front of other people, that really made an impact on me. I didn't like it. And I didn't like the way it felt. And I... It really, really changed the way I felt about him. And then one morning, I had my breakfast, and I didn't have nothing, y'all. Um, and I had a coffee pot that had a glass canister, you know, because back then you brewed your coffee, of course. And he had ate breakfast, and he wanted me to quit high school. And he started in wanting me to quit high school, and I told him I didn't want to quit. And he picked up his breakfast plate. And he slammed it down, and when he did, it flew across the table and hit my coffee pot. That was it. I mean, that's how I am. I was like, you have broke my coffee pot. I don't even have anything, and what I have, you're going to break? I mean, what's the point in this relationship, and what's the point in staying in this, and what's the point of having children with somebody like this for them to grow up and live this way? And I thought, there is no way. So I got ready for school and I looked at him and I said, Dwayne, and y'all, he was pretty good to me. I think that he would have been a good man away from his dad. Um, because, and I'll tell you why. Because I looked at him that morning and I said, Dwayne, when I get home today, all my stuff is going to be packed. No, I said, when you get home today, I'm packing up all my stuff when I get off the bus and I want you to take me home. Y'all, he said, okay. He didn't say, I don't want you to go. Will you please stay? He didn't beg me. He didn't ask me to come back. Not one time. Not one time, y'all. How odd is that? And it's not because he didn't love me. I believe it was because he did love me. I believe that he saw what had happened and what was going on. And he knew that I couldn't deal with it. I couldn't live that way. And so he let me go. Now, was I in love with him? Absolutely not at that point. I had been through too much and seen too much stuff. 
And did I hurt when I left him? And did I long for him? And no. And let me tell you why. A lot of people probably think, let me decline this call. I'm getting all these calls today. And a lot of people probably think that um, that's the craziest thing they've ever heard. <laughs> I never quit high school, y'all. I never stopped getting on that bus. I worked hard. And I wasn't going to quit. So when I left there and I went home, I told myself that I was never going to be dependent, totally dependent on a man. Because I had seen what my mama had been through with daddy. And I had been through that and seen what his mother went through with his dad and what I went through with him. And I told myself at that point, Tammy, you are going to college and you're going to do something. Now, and I did. Now, what I'm saying this for is to be an encouragement to other people who are in situations that they feel like they can't get out of or who feel like there's no end or they have a child that has done something really stupid like I did. Because y'all, everybody thought that this very smart girl that had always been in, you know, the, the smart classes and done great and was making straight A's had lost her mind and they thought that I would never amount to anything. They just automatically, automatically stereotyped me and put me in a box over here. But what they didn't realize is it didn't change who I was. And I kept, I kept, I loved myself. Now, um, because of what I went through, I got mad at God. I did. I got plum mad at God. Um, I didn't really know much about the Bible. I didn't really know what the Bible really says. I'd always just been taught things about the Bible. But I was mad because I felt like that I had done what I was supposed to do. And it didn't get me anywhere. So, I'm going to say this. Sometimes we make choices because of the situations we're in. And they're not always the best choice. And they're not always the choice that God would have had us make. So if you're in one of those situations, I want you to try your best not to look backwards, to look forward and keep going. And don't give up. Just don't give up. Never throw up your hands and, and give up. And don't wallow in your problems. Because most of the time when we have problems, we create them by our choices. If you've created a problem by the choices that you've made and you're in the problem and you don't see a way out, then pray. But try your best to work hard and to look forward for the future and tomorrow and know that no matter where you are in your life, you have a friend in Jesus. Because if it weren't for Jesus Christ and the fact that I was saved and I'm sure his Holy Spirit was around me, who knows what would have happened. I'm so thankful that I got saved at a young age so that the Holy Spirit could show me what was right and what was wrong. Now, it doesn't mean you always make smart choices, especially when you're 15 years old, but just know that he's always there. Know that there's always a future Know that there's always tomorrow and never, ever give up because it pays off in the end. Um, and that's just a small little portion of the stupid things I did that I learned from. But I'll say this. I want to be an encouragement to people. And I want people to see that even if we make bad choices, don't doesn't mean that people should give up on us. And we don't need to give up on ourself. Um, most of the people that I see that's around me that get addicted to drugs and alcohol do it as an outlet. They do it to feel good. They do it to make themselves get through the day, to help them. But if you will look towards Jesus Christ... And you will look in his word. 
He can help you get through the things. And if you'll get up off your rear end lots of times and do something about it, instead of turn into something like that, it really will work. Because what happens when you turn to those kinds of things is you get consumed with them and you never can climb out of that situation. So if you're in that situation, if you've given up and you're doing drugs or you're drinking alcohol or you're doing, no matter what you're doing, if you're selling your body, if you're uh, gambling online, if all you do is play games, if all you do is keep your head in social media and you never, ever, I mean, there's so many different things that women can do. We can shop too much. We can spend too much money. We can run up our credit cards. We, we can, there's just tons of things. But if you're doing those things, um, stop. Get up off your rear end. If it ain't nothing as simple as, and this is the truth, as picking up a wash rag and a toothbrush and some furniture polish, shine up your furniture. Be thankful for what you have in your house. Be thankful for that piece of furniture. And you know what? You're not going to be thankful if you don't clean it and, and take care of it. So that's all I wanted to tell y'all today. I'm going to cook all day long. I'm going to video all day long. But I was thinking in the car this morning when I heard you've got a friend that God has been so good to me. And no matter what I put myself in, and no matter what position I put myself in, he blessed me later with Chris, who's a wonderful Christian man. And we have a good family. Are we perfect? No. No. But we're so blessed. And I should be thankful. And you should be thankful for the things around you for the people in your life, and for knowing that you have a friend in Jesus Christ who can make all the difference in your life and give you what it takes to make it through these storms and keep going and being happy in tomorrow. Put that crap behind you and out of your mind and live for today. Because one day, we're not going to be here. And when we get to heaven, we are going to be judged, not about our sin. Because Jesus paid for our sin. But we're going to be judged, did we do anything for Jesus Christ? Did we, in any kind of way, help somebody? That's what we're going to be judged for. And start taking it more serious. And start thinking about it when you get up in the morning. And because y'all know what? People around us die every day. And there's accidents and there's things. And we should be ready. Okay? Um, and we shouldn't be ashamed when he gets us. When he gets here, if he does come back before we die. But that's pretty much all I'm going to say. I'm going to end with the negative. James 4.4 4 says, this is talking about friendship in the world, okay? Adulterer, adulterers and adul adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is en enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So humble yourself today. 
and thank the Lord for what you have. Um, I hope <laughs> that you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to have a wonderful day. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to you got a friend. Then I'm going to turn on, I wish I could cook to music, but they just won't let you do that. I just love music. Music makes me feel so good. If you, if you are disabled and there ain't a whole lot you can do, at least turn on the radio or some music because I think that's one of the most beautiful things God has given us is music. And put yourself in the right mood today. Get something done today. Clean out your refrigerator. Uh, dust some furniture. Clean your floors. At least you don't have to pour five-gallon buckets of water on it and use a broom handle and shove it out the door like I did. You know, and it's, most of us don't even want to pick up a mop. And I'm guilty, too. So let's get up and get some stuff done today, y'all. Have a great day. I love each and every one of you. And I hope and pray that if anybody's made a mistake in your life, especially if they're young, that you would give them some words of encouragement. I'm going to tell you, during that time of my life, I don't remember anybody being nice to me except a couple of my teachers. I remember it was my Miss Elliot and her husband, actually, were the best, the sweetest people to me after I did what I did. She was very positive and very encouraging. She was my homeroom teacher. And then I had my drafting teacher was her husband. And y'all know I wound up becoming an, an architectural engineer, and he was very encouraging. They treated me with respect. They didn't look down on me. They didn't treat me and give me that look like everybody else did, because most people judge. And um, because of them being positive to me, it helped me. So be positive to those around you who have problems. Um, I know it gets frustrating sometimes, but try to be an encouragement. Y'all have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God. Bye.